Hello everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well, I am going to try and make a reasonably passable sounding acoustic snare drum using Collision and a few other bits and bobs. And it's not really too difficult to do and I've been tinkering with it for a couple of days and I thought the results were pretty good and I had these results vetted by some friends and they said yeah that does sound pretty good so I'm going to do it now in a video right what we're going to do right we're going to get a drum rack I'm going to put a drum rack here and then I'm going to go and get collision and put collision in I'm going to put collision on this cell here and a drum rack so we get that when we start um, and really all I'm going to do is set the first resonator to membrane and then run that resonator into resonator 2, which is also a membrane. So let's just see what we get to start with. But one thing I'm going to do is actually I'm, I'm going to turn off the key tracking. So I'm going to turn, go to the MIDI MPE tab and where it says res1 tune, I'm going to put that to zero. And I believe I want to do it for resonator 2 as well. So that no matter what happens, uh, I'm just going to get the same note because I want to tune it using the tuner here. So, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of try and map this as I go. Let's open up the macros and let's go map to macro one. And I'm just going to go into the map settings here and I'm going to say I want the lowest to be minus 12 semitones and the highest to be 12 semitones. Um, because I think going any higher than that, it's sort of doesn't really work too well. Then um, I think maybe I'm going to map the decay to macro two and the material to macro three. Right. Yeah. So this is kind of going to be the top skin. May not sound like it at the, at the moment, but um, trust me, trust me, we'll get there. So let's turn on resonator two and let's set this to membrane as well. And let's map the same things. Let's go tune to macro five, uh, decay to macro six and material to macro seven. And then again, I'm going to go into the map here and change some of these things a little bit more. So again, for the, for the tuning, I'll have the resonator two tuning at uh, a minimum of minus 12 and a maximum of plus 12 semitones. I don't think we need 35 seconds for our decay time. So I'm going to set that to one second for resonator two and one second for resonator one. That ought to do. So we are running, according to the structure here, resonator one into resonator two. So let's just sort of tweak the setting. All right, so yeah, it's not quite there yet, but this is when sort of things get a little bit interesting because all we're gonna do is just put erosion on after the collision set it to noise, increase the width, and just put it somewhere roughly in the middle. And that's already kind of sounding like a fairly decent acoustic snare. Then it's just a case of sort of setting tunings. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so it's still not sounding quite there, but this is when this is when the real magic happens. We're going to saturate it. We're going to put some loads of saturation on it. And um, before we do that, let's put a limiter in here. Let's put a limiter on the end here. So we're going to turn on soft clip and just use the analog clip. And I'm just going to drive this. Okay, that's starting to sound all right. And then, yeah, it's just a case of... Some yeah. Yeah. Not bad, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, it's never going to beat a real acoustic snare, but... Okay, let's um, open out all the macros here. And let's maybe map the noise amount to macro 9. And the frequency to macro 10. And let's rename this, let's call this noise amount AMT, and then this could be noise freak. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You could drive it a little bit more if you want, but then it sort of 
brings a yeah that's actually quite nice let's map the drive as well let's map the drive to macro 11 and for that we'll go into the map editor and we'll say where's the drive drive here we go let's set that minimum of zero and let's say mm, let's maybe do 24 decibels maximum drive Okay, so we're not really getting much from the velocity. So the, the, the good thing about this um, using collision is that there's actually a huge amount of stuff that we can map velocity to in order to make a difference to the timbre. So obviously snare drums, when they're hit softly, sound very different to when they're hit very hard. So we could maybe try and do something. We could start by maybe just simply mapping the velocity to the mallet volume. So what happens with collision is that it, you get this mallet, which sort of creates a little trigger um, that, then, that then goes into the resonators. And, and the shape of that, the sound of that, the character of that greatly affects the way that it's resonated. So if we just increase the, um, let's set the velocity to the mallet volume to 70%. So I'm just going to mute my microphone a second. I'm triggering this from my push. Let's try it with note repeat on. So I'm pressing harder with the note repeat. It's not bad. We could also try and map it to the um, decay of maybe one of the resonators. Let's try resonator one. I'm gonna set this to maybe 50%. Wow, okay. Okay, that's a little bit too much drive. That's okay. We've got a drive dial. Let's turn the drive dial down. Yeah. Maybe that... Let's turn that repeat off. That's maybe a little bit too much on the decay. Let's try 25%. Yeah, that's not bad at all, is it? Right, so, I mean, that's kind of it, really. I mean, there are some other things here to play with the stiffness of the mallet. Yeah, that's good. Let's map that as well. Let's map that to macro 12. Um, those don't really sound like they're doing very much. I mean, there are more things that you can try here. You can try a little bit of pitch envelope, which can make it sound a little bit more thwacky. <laughs> On the first resonator only, I think. Ah, maybe you could do some velocity to the pitch envelope. Is that available in here? I think maybe it isn't. No. No, I don't think it is. Um, that's okay. That's fine. There's also this kind of hit and random thing. So this is, I never really sort of clocked this before, but uh, hit position it sets the location on the resonator at which the object is struck or otherwise activated. Um, I don't know if that would really make an impact, but um, oh, also I want the position to be uh, center on both resonators. Let's see what yeah, I'm going to turn that hit thing down and turn that hit thing down as well. So now we just hit random and um, listen to some variations until we find something we like. That's not very good. That's pretty good. That's, that's it's all right. It's a deep, low snare. We've basically got an acoustic snare drum generator now. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I I think that sounds pretty good. Yeah. There's just loads of sort of... That was not great. <laughs> so maybe what we could do now is maybe save some of these as macro variations. Don't know if I can like undo hitting random. Yeah, so that one, we'll save that one. Let's try another one here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one as well. Yeah. And then let's maybe try and find one ourselves. Yeah, 
let's save that. So there you go, really. I mean, there's not really that much more I can do. You just get the uh, collision, um, get the uh, membrane and uh, set them both to membrane, run one into the other and just sort of find a combination, put them out of tune with each other. That's kind of it. Maybe you might want to put the voices to one, um, but then I think sometimes it's good to have a little bit of polyphony if you want to have that acoustic sound. You could maybe now um, put some reverb on here, maybe. I don't know if that would sound, what that would sound like. Let's try, um, let's put the hybrid reverb on. And, um, oh my goodness me. Uh, let's maybe set it to convolution and maybe try some of the springs. Yeah, dub, dub. <laughs> so there you go. I guess now the thing to do would be to try and make a kick drum. I did try to do a kick drum with Collision and they were not really that good. They were more, it kind of sounded like someone hitting a freight container with a mallet, which was cool, but didn't have that acoustic kick drum kind of thing. I've also tried doing ride cymbals with it. Um, so I'm going to make this like a little quest to try and make a, a decent acoustic sounding physically modeled drum kit using collision. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, maybe a little bit too much decay. Yeah, I think the responsiveness from the velocity is maybe what will feel good when you're using it because you can kind of... Um, get some ghost notes that sound a little bit more natural rather than just a sample that's being played quietly. There maybe could be some things that you could do to sort of, I mean, I guess that's maybe where the, the hit and random randomization thing comes in. So if we maybe did it on resonator one, let's just, let's macro these. Let's say uh, resonator hit and resonator one random. Um, just to see if it sort of adds a little bit of something. Yeah, you can hear that there are slight changes. Yeah, I like it. Hang on, let me just mute my mic a sec. That one there, that's good. Dreadful. <laughs> Why did I save that one? Oh, the decay's really right down. So I think this button just overwrites that one. Yeah, okay. There are some very, very cool new um, things with push and 12.1 with regards to the macro variations, which I can't show you right now, but I will be doing a video on that later. It's pretty cool. You can trigger the macro variations from your push. Very good fun. Anyway, I think that'll do. So that was a bit of a quick one for me. Uh, I hope you liked that. And yeah, I'm going to try and maybe make a whole acoustic drum kit using Collision. Or maybe, um, I don't know, maybe Collision might not even be right for a kick drum. Uh, you could potentially do this with um, with Corpus as well. So why don't we maybe put Corpus on a, um, on a audio track. Let's maybe, let's get the vinyl distortion in and make some noise. Put the density down to one. And then gate that out with the gate here. Uh, bring the floor down, bring the threshold down to there. And then maybe get two instances of corpus. Find corpus here. Set it to membrane. And then get another one and duplicate that. Dry wet all the way up. And then just find a sort of sweet spot with the decay in the material and the tuning. <laughs> a little bit more noise. Now we're getting into avant-garde snare drums. <laughs> let's uh, now let's put erosion on here. Get the noise width up. And then maybe the saturator here again. It's all sort of the same process. Soft clip and then a limiter. Put the limiter on here. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean... This is the worst drum sound check in history. <laughs> so basically, my point being is that... Whoops, my point... All right, should, all right shut up now. Shush, shush. There we go. My point being is that you could maybe use corpus, uh, two instances of corpus as well, both set to membrane uh, with a saturator and erosion to just maybe run a, another snare drum. In fact, why didn't I just do that? Let's just go and find like a quick snare drum here. Whatever this, this one. That one, let's just use that as like a trigger. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's get rid of the gate and the vital distortion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's turn the quantize off here so I can just keep triggering that. <laughs> so maybe you could also... <laughs> wow, too much, too much decay. I don't think you want to go above one second uh, for the decay time on both resonators. And that's a little bit too much. So you could also use um, the membrane algorithm as a as a way to kind of enhance a snare sample. Maybe you've got like a snare that you like, but you want to kind of superimpose more snare onto it. Um, then you can do pretty good with two membranes and erosion and a saturator. Don't forget to limit it because it can get pretty loud. So... Yeah, it's okay. That one's good. Okay, there you go. So that is a video on how you can kind of make a half decent sounding acoustic snare drum using collision and corpus using a couple of membrane resonators erosion and saturator okay so yeah and then we can make this nice little instrument we can randomize the macro save them as variations and create our own snares from nothing i'm gonna go and put this on my patreon now where if you'd like to support this channel uh, you can do that and you'll get access to all of the live projects that i post in my videos for now and forever and um and maybe make some new friends your support is greatly appreciated and I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing if I didn't have my kind supporters there taking care of me. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Bye.